Hey and welcome, I'm Laura Live and I'm Stone Yoga. This is going to be a yoga flow on the go. So thanks for joining me. This class is for you if you don't have a lot of time but you want your practice to be worthwhile. We're going to start right off on our hands and knees and some cat-cow stretches. Sometimes on the days when I don't have a lot of time, I'll go right into sun salutations, but I do think it goes better if you give your body a little bit of a chance to transition to your practice. So following your breath, inhale to cow pose, chest and belly drop, exhale to cat, arching the spine up, let the head drop down. Notice how you're feeling today. Now, just because you don't have a lot of time, it doesn't mean you need to rush or move faster as you practice. We're just going to try to be a little bit efficient, that's all. But don't feel like you have to speed up your breathing or speed up your movements in any way. Let's come on up to our knees and we're going to take the right leg out to the side and just a little side stretch here. So right hand to that leg, left arm up and over. And breathe. So checking in with the torso in multiple directions here. Just did some flexion extension, and now let's do some side stretch. Let's take that left hand down to the ground, right arm up and over, really elongating the whole side of the body. And then if you're able, pick up that right foot, push through the heel, extend both directions. Finding a bit of balance, and then finally, if you're able to, bend your knee, reach back with your hand for your foot behind you, Pull the heel away from the hip and just give yourself a little bit of a back bendy kind of stretch. Stretching the front of the quad and across the front of the right shoulder. And then let that go. Knee down and we'll just switch to the other side. So left leg out, hand to that leg, right arm up and over. It might feel like, well, we just stretched this side. We sort of just did, but not exactly like this. And then let's go ahead and take the right hand down. And then that left arm is going to go up and over, creating a diagonal. So as opposed to rounding and trying to curve the back here, think of extending along the side of the torso. And then as you float up, stabilize through the core, let the foot reach away from you. And then maybe bend the knee behind you, reach back with the hand for the foot, and pull the heel away from the hip. So we don't want the heel tucked in, but really try to pull it away like a bow. And then let that knee come to the floor again. Inhale, reach the arms out and up. I'm going to turn back on my mat and just briefly drop to child's pose. So hips to heels, forehead to floor. Maybe let the hands come back towards the feet. Breathe into the back of the body. Check in with yourself here. Walk the hands out. Tuck your toes, lift your knees, and let's move to our first down dog. Give yourself a little time to pedal through the feet, bending one knee, let the opposite leg straighten. Really spreading the fingers, rooting the hands into the mat. The more the hands push forward and down, the more the hips are able to lift up and back. And you can get that nice long stretch through the spine. Walk the feet to the front of the mat. Let's stand in a dangling position. So just a nice, simple forward fold. You might grab your elbows if the hands tend to hit the floor. Maybe nod or shake the head to loosen up the neck a little bit here. And then bringing your fingertips down, let's take the right leg up into the air. Reach it for the sky. So a standing split. Now it's early, so you might not be finding the biggest hamstring stretch you've ever done, but just take the leg up, fold towards your left leg, be where you're at right now, and then we're going to step that foot all the way back for a runner's lunge. Left knee remains over the ankle, reach through that back heel, reach the head forward as well. So your back leg is completely straight, it's the front knee that's bending to 90 degrees. And then we're just going to take a simple twist from here, so right, plant your right palm right inside that left foot, left arm up. Turn back to the floor, plank pose, and let's hold for a couple of breaths. 
Shoulders over wrists, reach through the head, reach through the heels. Drop the knees, bend the elbows, lower the heart between the hands, and then cobra pose, a couple breaths in cobra. Shoulders back, heart forward. Roll over the toes, downward facing dog. Maybe just finding some more stillness this time, lengthening as you inhale, deepening as you exhale. Walk the feet forward again, back to the top of the mat. Let's bend the knees and roll up to standing. So come all the way up, reach the arms out and up. Exhale, swan dive forward over the legs. Let's do that two more times. Bend the knees, inhale to roll up. Exhale to swan dive down. And once more. And then this time, once we get to our forward fold, we gonna stay and take the left leg up. So sweep it up, standing split side two. Step back long, you're in your runner's lunge. Make sure your right knee is over the ankle, so vertical shin, but you can lunge deeper. If you start to lunge deeper and your knee starts to go past your toes, then widen or lengthen your stance. Strong back leg, really engage that back quadricep muscle. And then plant your left palm. Try not to change the low body here. Take the right arm up. Reaching through the back heel. And then turn to plank pose. Lower down, this time maybe take Chaturanga Dandasana. So keep the body long and then just sweep to the tops of the feet for upward facing dog. Roll over the toes, exhale. Downward facing dog and breathe. We'll hold for just a breath or two here and then we're gonna flow right into some sun salutations. So really connect with your ujjayi. We've already done all of the poses involved, except for Ardha Uttanasana, which we'll do now. So look forward, step walk, or you can hop forward. Feet together this time. Take your half lift, so flatten out the back. Head reaches away from tail. Exhale, forward fold Uttanasana, and then reverse swan dive to come up to the top of the mat. Palms together in front of the heart, and let's flow right into the first full sun A. Inhale, reach. Exhale, Uttanasana. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, Up Dog or Cobra. Exhale, Downward Facing Dog. And we're just gonna take one inhale, and then exhale, Step Walk or Hop Forward so we can keep that flow going. Half lift, fold. Reverse the swan dive, palms together. Following the pace of your own breath, let's do two more full cycles. Keep it going, same sequence. You can modify knees to the floor taking cobra. You could take it up a notch by jumping back. You might jump forward. Check in with your own energy level, how you're feeling. We don't want to get sloppy, so if taking a more advanced version gets sloppy, then modify, go back down a notch. Flowing to your next down dog. So after you've completed those two, we'll meet up in down dog. And we'll start to just build on some standing poses, add on to our flow sequence. Sun A's are kind of the foundation, but there's certainly more we can do from there. Let's take the right leg into the air, down dog split. Keep your hips level. Forward with the shoulders, one-legged plank. Reaching through that back heel. 
And now we're going to try to roll to the edge of the left foot and maybe keep space between the feet as you lift the right hand up. Little variation of side plank. If this is too much, just align the feet. And then from here, perhaps we can just step that right foot all the way forward, all the way to the top of the mat, come to the ball of the back foot, and then come on up crescent pose, high lunge. From here, shift your weight forward. Let's move to warrior three. So our first balance pose here, reaching through the hands, reaching backwards through the lifted heel, pull your navel in, attempt to level out your hips if possible. And then bend your front knee, step to the back of the mat with the back foot, lower your back knee. Let's take a low lunge. Arms are still extended this whole time. Hips forward, heart lifts. You can create a little more bend in the upper body now than what we wanted in our crescent pose. And then hands to the floor. Vinyasa, and you might choose to do the modified one since knee is already down, it might make more sense. Let's do the other side. Left leg up, square hip down dog split. Try to keep the thigh facing the floor. Now as we come forward to one-legged plank, the relationship between your leg and your torso should stay the same, so there's still a long extension. And then rolling to the outer edge of your right foot, take your weight over that right wrist, lift the left arm up, variation of side plank. And then looking to the front of the mat, so you can just step that left foot right up. Come to the ball of the back foot, crescent pose, high lunge. Floating into warrior three. Now if these arms don't have room to extend or they're just tr causing you trouble, palms together in front of the heart. But if you're able to extend them, they should stay alongside your ears. Leg, torso, arms, everything level. And then bending your front knee, step back long. Lightly lower your back knee down. Low lunge, heart up, arms lift. Hips forward toward that front heel. Hands down. Left knee back to meet the right, lower the heart. Take your cobra or you can go to up dog, exhale. Downward facing dog. Inhale, look to the front of the mat, exhale, step walk or hop your feet there. Half lift, fold. Let's take Uttanas or Utkatasana rather, so chair pose. Bend the knees over the toes, sink the hips down, weight on your heels, arms alongside the ears. And then right back into vinyasa. So exhale, uttanasana. Inhale, ardha. And moving to down dog. If you want to skip any vinyasas here, of course you may. But again, you know, we're flowing. We want to kind of keep this practice vigorous as long as we've got. Let's take the right leg up. This time we're going to open the hip and bend the knee. So variation on down dog split. Heel drops to the hip. Try to keep your shoulders level, even though that low body is twisting. Now, move your right knee, you can keep it bent, up to the left arm. Shoulders come forward, little twist, extend the leg under your arm, lift your left hand up, twist towards the ceiling. And then left hand comes back down. Reach the right leg into the air again, inhale, Exhale, step it forward for warrior one. Pivot your back heel down. Come on up, Virabhadrasana, first side. Make sure those hips are squared, shoulders over hips. Lunge deep, root into the outer edge of the back foot. From here, 
Ardha Chandrasana, or half moon on the right. So right fingers come forward. You can put your hand on a block if you needed to, otherwise just the floor. Maybe left hand comes to the hip as you transition, but then see if you can open that arm up, reach through your lifted heel. Bend your front knee, step all the way back, warrior two. Hold for about five breaths here. Reverse warrior. Vinyasa. Side two. Left leg up, open the hip, bend the knee, point the knee to the sky, twist the hips, shoulders level. Knee to the right arm. And then extend the leg under you, edge of the foot to the floor, right arm up, twist open. Right hand down, inhale, down dog split, exhale, left foot forward, warrior one, side two. Get that alignment going, so squaring up the hips. Half moon pose, Ardha Chandrasana, this time left side. Find your way in, push through the lifted foot. Try to stack the shoulders. Maybe your gaze will open up as well, but try not to let the left shoulder jet forward and then the arm try to reach up and sort of out of joint. Keep integrated. Step back to warrior two. Front heel and back arch lined up now. And then level out your hips, knee over ankle. So we'll be here for maybe five breaths, but the first couple, you wanna make sure your alignment is in place. And then the last couple breaths, you can deepen, enjoy the pose. Turn that front palm up, reverse your warrior. And vinyasa, heading back to down dog. All right, inhale, look forward. Exhale, step walk or hop forward. Half lift, fold. Let's take chair pose again. So Utkatasana, bending the knees over the toes, and then we're gonna twist right. Press the palms. Feet together, knees together. Standing on the right foot. See if you can step the left foot back without losing your twist. Reach through that back leg, high lunge twist, maybe fly the arms open. And then keeping your upper body turned to the right, float up, reach behind you perhaps, look to your back heel lunging forward. From here, we're gonna rotate to warrior two. So level out the arms and just turn your torso. The front leg shouldn't change at all, but the back foot's gonna adjust. So you're gonna pivot down to your back heel. Inhale, reverse warrior, and then let's take extended side angle for a few breaths. Because this is gonna be our only extended side, if you want a variation such as a bind, you can go ahead and build that in here. And then release all of that, reverse your warrior. Take a vinyasa, head back to down dog. Inhale, look to the front of the mat. Exhale, step walk or hop forward. Half lift, fold. And once again, we'll take chair pose here. So Utkatasana, and then this time we're gonna twist left. Right arm outside of the left leg, press your palms.
Stepping your right foot back. Find your balance. Maybe fly the arms. Floating up, keep your balance, keep your twist. And then maybe even reaching back, look back to your back heel. Keep lunging forward, straightening out that back leg. And then rotating to warrior two, the back foot's gonna need to adjust into place. Inhale, reverse your warrior, and then exhale into extended side. Forearm on the thigh, fingers on the floor, or you could let yourself take a bind here if that would feel good to you. Let that go. Reverse the warrior again and travel through a vinyasa. Actually, let's just go as far as lowering down to the floor. We're going to take a bow pose here. So bend the knees, reach back with the hands for the tops of the feet. Pull the heels away from the hips. Let the thighs rise. Let your shoulder blades get pulled together. And up away from the floor. All right, let that go. Now, forearms underneath you. Let's lift on up, and instead of going to down dog, we're gonna go to dolphin pose here. So elbows under shoulders, lift the hips, heart back, head hangs heavy. Take the right leg up if you can, and then maybe some little hops up off those left toes if you like. And then maybe switching sides. Play with this how it works for you. Toes down, knees down. Now let's take a camel pose, Ustrasana. So second back bend. You can keep toes tucked, or if you know you can reach your heels more easily, you can extend the feet, chin in or head back. Support your waist, come up, hands to your mat, downward facing dog, but make it a slightly narrower one. We're going to reach the right hand over to the left calf and pull for a twist. Right hand down, left hand over to the right leg, pulling the body through like you're looking up under your armpit. All right, now let's walk the feet maybe about to the center of the mat, turn the toes out, drop the hips for a squat. Arms inside the legs, press the palms together, heart forward, malasana. A little bit more balance here before we get to the actual end of our practice. So maybe a bit of crow pose. If you want to take a bakasana, move the arms underneath the shins, plant your hands on the floor with the fingers spread wide, work towards shifting your weight over those wrists, and then let the feet just float up. Now you can just practice this pose, you can hold this pose, you can take variations on this pose. If you want to, travel to a tripod headstand from this pose with the feet already lifted, see if you can lower your head to the floor just ahead of your hands though, so not right between them, slightly ahead, creating a three-point triangle, and then let the feet float up into the air. And then from wherever you are, make your way back down. Feet return to the mat. And then let's uh, roll all the way to our feet for Padahastasana. So letting the hands slide underneath the feet. Do this one at a time so you can truly get your toes all the way up to your wrists. Whittle the toes into the wrists. Lift and lengthen the torso and then fold in. Shoulders pull onto your back. 
Massage your wrists. Maybe open the backs of the legs here as well. And then bend the knees. Go ahead and come down to a seat. We're going to take Bhadakanasana. So letting the knees go out wide, heels in. Let yourself fold. Keeping left foot tucked in, extend the right leg out. Flex that foot. Inhale, reach the arms up, and then Jani Shushasana, fold towards the right leg. Switch sides, left leg out, right foot tucks in, Janushasana side two. your legs. That's what I've got for you today. Now, if you need to move to your back, if you want to move to your back, if you have time to move to your back, maybe hug the knees in, take another supine twist, and then a little time in Shavasana. Your body would love you for that. But if this is all the time you've got, go ahead and close with me now. Inhale, reach the arms out and up. Exhale, palms together in front of the heart. Close the eyes. Just give yourself a moment to check in with your breath here. Notice how you're feeling after your short practice. And we'll end with a simple bow forward. The light in me recognizes and honors the light in you. Thank you very much for joining me and sharing practice today. Namaste. All right, well, as always, give the practice a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't done that yet. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave those for me as well. Take care, and I hope you'll join me again next time.